Hey, it's Andy Burns, editor in chief of Biff Bam Pop, and I am here with the fine folks from the film Moon Point. Can you guys introduce yourselves? Uh, hi, I'm Sean Cisterna. I directed the film. I am Nick McKinley. I played uh, Daryl in the film. Hey, I'm Paula Brancati. I played Kristen in the film. And I promised these guys that I was going to ask them some really, really hard-hitting, juicy questions. I know. <laughs> so uh, my favorite one is, uh, do you like stuff? Okay. Um... Uh, I think stuff has been in a decline in the past mm. nine to ten years. Mm. Stuff used to be something, and now we have to. Um, it has to get back. It needs. We need to reinvigorate stuff. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Sean, as quickly as possible. I'm, I'm playing a love hanging with friends now, so I can <laughs> <laughs> words over like seven letters. Nice. So now that we got we got the hard stuff out of the way, yeah, right? yeah. so you know, and hopefully we'll all be at ease for the for the next little while. Yeah. But um, so what I wanted to start off with, and I actually wanted to start off with you, Sean, is like, how did you come to the film? You directed the film. How how did your involvement begin? Um, I, I worked with a, a writer, Rob Lazar, and, and we developed this um, the script over a couple of years at least. Um, and so when we started to actually raise funding for it, you know, we were on a bit of a roll and got up to about a million dollars worth of financing, and then the Economy tanked and we we're left with zero. So um, it was either a do or die situation. We wanted to move forward but didn't have any money, so this was essentially like a little credit card film that we gambled on. And nice. Yeah, let's we'll see what the outcome is. Well, it turned out pretty yeah. well on the credit card. Yeah, absolutely. And what about you guys? Maybe you could talk about how you got involved. Um, my involvement was the same as any involvement with feature films I've done, and it started with a disastrous audition, <laughs> um, followed by being calmed down by the generous filmmakers, and them uh, giving me a chance to be in their movie. Uh, anyway. What's a disastrous audition? <laughs> I, you know what, I get nervous still. It still, like, still doesn't feel like a natural thing to me. Being in front of camera feels natural. <laughs> but um, uh, the uh, the audition process uh, stresses me out, especially because I was I, I love the script so much, and I, I just wanted it so bad, or or whatever, you know. Um, so yeah, I just kind of froze up a bit, dropped a couple lines in that audition. They calmed me down. Sean said, "Hey, tell me about the first um, person you were ever in love with," and I talked about a girl named Caitlin from grade five, who stole my heart and took it to Red Deer, Alberta. <laughs> Very similar to the film, except for the, the reindeer part. There are some parallels. Yes. Yeah. What is this woman doing now? Yeah, uh, I wanted to, wanted you to say it. Oh, uh, she... There's... It's possible she might be an exotic dancer of some kind. Yeah. Or something like that. I'm not certain. I'm not certain. It's, it's true, actually. Right. He looked her up. <laughs> yeah, I did look her up on Facebook. Look at the beauty of Facebook. That's what yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Um, you can see. So... Okay. We were, we were doing film festivals and we went from Calgary to Edmonton and we took the drive right through Red Deer and we're, Nick, we were sitting <laughs> in a, we were tempted. We were, we were sitting in a Wendy's Tim Hortons and I was actually like having a panic attack thinking I brought a this, phone girl, over. this girl would, would walk through the door just, I guess Red Deer's not, like it's not a small town, it's like a pretty large city center and I like, it's I had this, I, I was like, I was, I, I was feeling like it was like the only Tim Hortons. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Paula? Yeah. <laughs> uh, my involvement in, yeah. the, in the film? Um, well, it was exciting for me because it's not often that you get offered a role in Canada, and I've been working since I was nine, so it was very exciting to be offered this part, and Sean and I worked together when I was a kid um, on my first project called Ricky's Room, and yeah, I heard about the project a couple years before it was even, you know, going into production, and um, and then Sean gave me a call and was like, we're going to camera in a week and a half, what do you say? <laughs> and I said yes, and it, was, and it was like, I was saying this earlier, that it's exciting to have butterflies and be nervous, and like, I like all of that, I really like being challenged, so all the unknowns were a big attractive uh, factor for me. Nice. I yeah. wanted to know, like, from the both of you, just what were your first impressions when you, uh, when you first read the script? First impressions. Um, it's, I, guess I saw it go through a few different versions. I just liked that it was quirky. I liked that. Um, I really liked the friendship of the three of them. Like that was something that I thought. Like there's a few love stories in the movie, and that to me was a big one. Was like them discovering things about themselves uh, through this meeting. 
know? Yeah, you know, and like... It's really cheesy, but I mean, like, I think it's really true. Well, and just this, uh, all these broad, um, characters that, uh, our characters meet on the road, kind of... Well, we didn't know, like, we didn't know who'd be signing up to play them, No, too, not so. at all, but there was, you know, the, all these, like, really, um, interesting, uh, huge, kind of, uh, crazy, crazy characters are, 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 we meet along the road are kind of grounded by, like, just the three of us, me and Paula and Kyle's character, uh, Femur. Um, and we, I, I, I was really impressed by, like, how, how the human connection was written there. And so it's always like we're going through this world of, like, crazy grown-ups trying to figure out how to be a grown-up ourselves. And, of course, I loved that it was about your first love. Like, I thought that, you know, I, I just like, I like that, that feeling of reminiscing and the what-ifs and all of that. I felt like that was something really universal. And what could have been. The what could have been. Yeah, we all have it, right? We, we all have, have the what could have yeah. been. One of, the, one of the things that I really liked about the film, and, and if you're watching online, this is a spoiler. Well, sort of. <laughs> but um, it's not particularly, it's not, I was going to say particularly, it's not predictable. The people who you sort of think might wind up together don't wind up together. And the mm. people that do wind up together... It's a, it's a surprise, and even like at, at the end, you know, you don't have the big romantic kiss that maybe you think is gonna come, and that was one of the things that I really dug about it, because it didn't, it didn't follow something that you think would maybe be conventional, and is that something that you guys were, like, aware of as you were filming, that you're not following, even though it's a love story, it's not necessarily like this conventional, expected love story. Yeah, I think we were watching a lot of Shyamalan movies right around the time we were writing the ending, so <laughs> a lot of twists in there. I, I mean, like, look, you know, I can't say that I didn't want a big romantic kiss between certain a certain <laughs> couple, but that's because I like that kind of big moment. But truthfully, I like that it wasn't it wasn't a traditional rom rom com. Yeah. You know, it was really it's different, it's unique, um, and the response that I seem to find, you know, is in general from people who watch it is that they want to see it again and that they have their favorite parts. But the more they see it, the more they they grow to like different characters and. Those are my favorite kinds of movies too, the ones I can watch again and again and again. Did you feel the weight of because you're in virtually you're in virtually every scene. Mm -hmm. If not every scene, like pretty much it almost everything. Did you feel the weight of that going in? Did it feel like a weight knowing that I mean a lot of it ends up resting on your shoulders because you're in almost every scene? Yeah, you know, well um yeah, I took it pretty seriously, uh, going into it. I you know, I took it as seriously as uh, any character I love and like story I love, you know, it's just like um, I definitely wanted to prove myself. This is the kind of movie I've always like kind of wanted to make these sort of like these little stories, you know, these um, uh, You know something something that isn't You know too flashy or anything like that something really personal That's the kind of those are the kind of movies I want to be a part of so I did feel the way but it also Daryl, you know a lot of parallels between his and my life at the time, uh, and you know I'm wearing my own clothes for most of the movie oh, too. Yeah. So that that was kind of uh, that was cozy. <laughs> yeah. How long how long was the shoot for, and where did you guys shoot? We shot for uh, about twelve days. Um, yeah, it was really quick, and we filmed uh, in York region, just north of Toronto, Aurelia, Oakville. We went on this little actual road trip. Seeing the, you know, filming locations yeah. beforehand, it was, mm -hmm. just, it was yeah. actually like emulating a road trip as much as possible. That's that was another thing that I did about the film, the the, the whole road trip idea, but also like, I, and I, I I think I was tweeting with someone, but it wasn't you, it was whoever was running the uh, the movie uh, Twitter. But I was saying, you know, someone asked me what was my favorite part, and one of the things that I really liked also about the film was the landscape, um, because it feels, one, it feels Canadian in, in the best way possible. But it also, you know, like, as a, when you're on that road trip, you feel as though you're traveling along with the characters, and so I'm kind of wondering how much of the, how much was it in your head as you're directing that the landscape could become almost like a character in itself, that it's going to play a role in the film? Yeah, we definitely wanted a lot of, like, long lens shots of, you know, long dirt roads sort of thing to make their journey seem, you know, pretty impossible to undertake, but, um, you know, it was always designed to shoot around the fall, I mean, Pretty like the fall colors and pretty autumn colors. Mm -hmm. We really lucked out with the weather too. I don't think there's one scene with rain really. Like mm -hmm. it was really a beautiful yeah. fall a little, shoot. A little chilly. Certainly that chilly. Night. <laughs> that night of Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah, 
And uh, what else? What? There's a couple nights. <laughs> a couple chilly nights where we were we heating up in my car. In, in Paula's car there. We go. Yeah. Listen to music. Pump up tunes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much um, before you guys started shooting, did you guys get a chance to bond at all before you went into the shoot? How well did you know each other? Or was it all? We had that one drink in Liberty Village. We, yeah. Where we all sat down and met a couple of days before starting. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was, that's, you know, really we were meeting each other on camera, like in these situations, in my car, like everything sort of just fell into place. And I think we went back to reshoot a scene that was like, or we missed a scene that was really early in the film. And the note we kept, and this was like, you know, after we'd shot for two weeks. And they're like, guys, you have way too much chemistry now. Like, you've got to tone that down. Because <laughs> it's we're not, not there yet. Because we're not there we're yet, not there you know? Because in general, we did have that. We did shoot almost, you know, in order to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. So it was it was nice. You got to develop the relationships of the characters. When you, you, you said previously, Sean, that it was 12 days. Does that, in, in you know, in some worlds, I would be like, wow, that's really short, that's really tight. Does that add to the experience? Does it, is it, are there pros to having to shoot for a fairly short amount of time? Um, I, I liked it with it because it, um, the film ended up having like more of a, like a documentary feel. We did you know, a lot of handheld takes and, and, and worked around the actors as much as possible. So it did feel as, you know, as bizarre as the, the situation in the script is, like the, the actors played it with a lot of realism because we didn't have a lot of time to perfect every sort of uh, camera move here and there. So yeah, it ended up, I think, grounding the performance even more. When um when I told my wife that I was coming to talk to you guys, she said, I want you to ask them a question for me. And I said, oh, okay, well, I'll ask a question. She said, she wanted to know how closely you guys stuck to script or if there's any moments of improv maybe when you're meeting up with some of the characters or anything like that. Uh, I think it was vastly different. I mean, Paula is pretty much the one who stuck to her script the most. Mostly. I, you know, I yeah. look back and I wish I would have veered off a bit more, only so, because I wasn't used to that. Like, I, it's a freedom that I didn't understand coming from series TV. Like, sure. I pretty much can't add, add a lot. Um, so I wish I would have loosened up, especially in those earlier scenes. But there are moments where I was like, oh, I got to keep some of my my own little ridiculousisms in there. Yeah. <laughs> my, yeah. little, <laughs> my little things, but... Yeah, I, I'm like, I'm bad for that. Sometimes I, I like improving. I'm I, I feel a lot more comfortable when there is that room to improv. And thankfully, uh, Sean's just really collaborative and wants to hear lines. There were a couple times where I felt like you're like, okay, but Nick, I thought, let's get like, to the actual line now. Nick did such a good job of like staying because there were such you know there was such good material in the script. So he would he would stay on script and then he would just add right. Like I think that's the best improv too, where you get. Yes. Options. Yes. Just about when you're ready to yell cut, Nick will have. Yeah, yeah. To it's end a button, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was playful. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, guys, for talking to us. That's Thank awesome. you.